hi guys my name is priyanka i'll be the moderator for now so uh, rahul if you want uh, you can directly go ahead share your screen and we can start the webinar right away yeah sure i think that would be good because uh, yeah okay exactly yeah so hi everybody uh, this is rahul here uh, so before i start on uh, the time series analysis I'll actually introduce myself. So I'm a working professional with seven years of experience. I'm uh, currently working with Oracle Financials here in Bangalore. So I've worked on multiple domains, starting from aviation to e-commerce and now into finance, and dealt with uh, quite problem involving time series analysis. So that's all about uh, what has happened on the time series part. Throughout my career, so here today, uh, since we have already lost a lot of time here, so I'll, I'll just directly go to the presentation. And uh, the very idea that I have is I want to give you an intuition of why are we dealing with time series problems separately, okay? And uh, how can we deal it on a real life, okay? I want to connect those dots, okay? So I'll just share my screen. Uh, let me know if you all can see it. Yeah. Uh, yes, it is yeah. visible, Rahul. Yeah. Uh, so the overall agenda of the session will be to start off like why are we uh, learning time series separately? So uh, if you know, right, we we have been dealing with a lot of problems, like people who are from the background of ML or data science, they know that we have regression problem, right? Classification problem, all those supervised, unsupervised, everything, right? Why are we learning time series separately? And why there is so much of buzz around learning so many algorithms in time series separately? Okay, so let's come to that. So if you could, let me just enlarge this. So if you could take one example here where you have, uh, on the left-hand side, if you could see it, I have a predictor here and I'm trying to see what is, what is the sales of, a, sales of an ice cream based on one of the variable as temperature, okay? So in all these uh, recursion problems that you see, we can actually find out the sales based on interpolating the information that we already have it, okay? Let's say at today, the temperature was this, and I have this point that you see it here, that will be my sales, right? So temperature is something that is going to repeat. So if I am plotting something of, let's say, from, um, hmm, let's say from five degrees Celsius to some 40 degrees Celsius, right? Now, any of the temperature that we see is might going to repeat it, right? So if I want to find out the sales of ice cream at any given point, I'll have a lot of points in my nearby, right? Who is going to actually uh, support or justify my uh, predictions, isn't it? So we have a lot of points. So this kind of problem is interpolation problem. Why interpolation? Because we are finding from within the range of values. So if you see this, this is the range of values for temperature. Okay, so I have a lot of points in this. Now, what happens in case of time series? We, one of the axes becomes, what we call as a panel data become time, right? So now, in case of this, the time is not going to repeat, isn't it? Because what has actually occurred at any instance T is not going to happen again. And if you want to go and predict any other instances, that's not going to, be very beneficial, right? Because we are not interested in knowing something that has happened on the past, isn't it? So now what happens is, as and when we go on predicting the future, the unpredictability increases, isn't it? Because let's say I'm predicting this point here, right? With some error, okay? And how am I predicting with whatever I have learned it from the past, okay? Now this is, this will have some error, isn't it? Now I'm going to use this only and predict the next time instance. Okay, so I'm going to predict the sales at the next time instance. Now what happens is the previous point also had error, right? And I'm using that also to predict the next point. 
So what happens is this errors are carried forward. Okay, so this is what going to this is what is going to happen in time series, and this is this is what it makes it very difficult. And we deal time series separately. Okay, and uh, more or less all the all the problems that you see in time series are extrapolation problems. Okay, why? Because we are predicting outside the range of the current data that we have. Okay. Now, so we'll talk about two things here. One is autocorrelation, and second thing is uh, partial autocorrelation. Okay, I'll take an example of uh, sales of ice cream. Okay. So when you are actually thinking of predicting this right as one uh, variable like sales of an ice cream, so one idea could be that whatever sales is there today, right, might be dependent on the uh, sale price which was there in the last month, and so on, maybe two months back, isn't it? So this is how I can actually uh, depict it in a correlogram here. Okay, so we have this price at this month. Okay, and price at the last month, or price two months back. Okay, now there are two types of effect. If I could show it here, the one is maybe the price that you get today, okay, is dependent on the price that is on the last month. So this effect that you can see, and the another one is let me use the annotation here. So this effect that you can see, another one is that. Price two months back affects your last month price, and that directly affects your current price. So, in order to get to price at two, there are two paths. This is one path, and this is another path. Okay. Now, how do we find the direct effect which is there? Okay. In order to find out the direct effect, or what we call as a partial autocorrelation, that means I'm removing this indirect effect which is there. Okay, so finding the indirect effect, right, which is there, it's very easy. So what do you do? One is that uh, just like you have a correlation, right? In mathematics, you can find out the correlation between two series. So I can have two series as X and Y, where you have prices for Jan, Feb, March, and May, right? So uh, this you can see you have two months in price difference. So you have price for Jan, you have price for March, and you have Feb and April. Right, so you can find the correlation between these, and the correlation which you find in this is nothing but your ACM, which is a direct correlation. Okay, which is very easy. You can just find it. Now, difficult part is finding the PACM, which is the direct effect. Okay, so how do we find the direct effect? I'll just go to the next slide. Okay. So ACM, we heard that we can find the correlation between the lagged series, which is there. So this is nothing but your lagged series. So series one and series two, which is two months lag period. Okay. Now, in order to find out the lag series, what we'll do is we'll use what we call as a regression. Okay. If you see this, I'll, I have written one regression equation here, which is the price today is dependent on some coefficient into price what, what was there last month, some coefficient which, which and price which was there two months back. Okay. And when I'm actually predicting this price, there might be some error. Okay. Now the coefficient that you get it by this regression equation is nothing but your PCF value. Now you can very well argue in this that why it has that direct impact, not the indirect impact that it can have, this path, right? It will not have it because if you see this beta one coefficient, right? This is already been taken care. So price of whatever is there from the last month, the impact which is there is taken care by beta one, okay? So beta two tells me what is the direct impact of the price today with whatever the price was there two months back. Okay, and this is how we are going to calculate partial autocorrelation factor. Okay, and PACF is very important because this actually tells you, removes all the indirect effects that could be there from the n time series back and takes care of direct impact. Let's say you want to predict the prices of uh, uh, 
uh, sales price of ice creams from five months back. So I can actually say what is the impact at T minus five. So this coefficient is going to give me the PACM value. Okay, and ACF is very easy that we saw. We can directly find out the correlation between both of the lagged series. When I say lagged series, it's just the same series you take a lag. Okay. Okay. Now, so why it is called auto regression model, AR model? Auto regression is because we are regressing on the same variable. Okay. Regressing it with the same value, just the lagged series. Okay. So that is your AR model that you have. Now, now, whatever model that we'll talk about, right, it assumes that the model, uh, that the series that I have is actually stationary, okay? What do you mean by stationary? Okay, so in a, in a, for a time series to be stationary, we check for three factors, okay? One is the series should have a constant mean, okay? The standard deviation should be constant and there should not be seasonality okay let's see how these things are right let's see it in your diagram here okay so if you see this diagram here right this is a google stocks which is there if you see this, this series the the mean is constantly increasing changing right if you take any time stamp let's say from january 16 to uh, jan 2017 so in this case if you see this is the mean here isn't it and if you take any of the timestamp here, the mean is shifting. So your mean is not constant, okay? So this is not a stationary time series, okay? We'll see how we can make this time series stationary, okay? Uh, in the coming uh, slides here, okay? Now, this is one thing where your mean is, comes, uh, mean is actually changing over time. This is also not stationary. Why? Because if you see, there is a seasonality which is there, okay? If seasonality, you can see it uh, like a cycle which repeats after a certain period of time, okay? So this series is also not stationary, okay? This series is also not stationary because if you see the fluctuations is increasing or decreasing, right? So that means your standard deviation or the variance is not constant, isn't it? So the, these were the uh, conditions. Let me go back to the previous slide. These are the condition to check whether the series is stationary or not. Okay. Now, we talked about one model, which is an autoregression. Okay. When I say this, this if you see it, right? Uh, let me go here. Okay. So this you see it. When I say that it is actually dependent on the previous time stamp only, okay? So when I say price at T is dependent only on price at T minus one, this is nothing but your AR1 model, okay? Because it is dependent only on the previous time series, okay? Previous lags. And uh, this, you saw about stationarity. How do we test it statistically, like if the series is stationary or not? We have a way to do it, which is ADF test, which is augmented Decker Fuller test. Okay. Uh, if you put it in Python, we have a library called Stats Model where we have this test. You can use it. And based on the p value that you get, you can say that this series is stationary or not. Okay. Now, let, let me take one example in what, in case where what happened when your series is not stationary, what, how to deal with that. Okay. Now, if you talk about this series only, right, there is an increasing trend which you can find it. Okay. This is an increasing linear trend. Okay. That means if, if I talk about this increasing linear trend here, that means in this, there is a constant change that is happening on your y axis. Okay. And if I take a differencing, okay, if I take a first order differencing, that means I, I subtract, let's say, yt, the yt minus one. Then I'm then that change is going to be constant, isn't it? And if that change is constant, that means whatever whatever fluctuation and whatever uh, pattern is there in the data is going to be preserved. Okay. And if I change this to this, if I do a uh, first order differencing, 
the city is going to look something like this. Okay, this is going to the uh, the pattern which is there is going to be preserved. Okay, this is one of the way which you can use it to make the series stationary because any of the model that we are going to build it does not necessarily we we, we are not sure that the uh, series of what we are getting is going to be stationary. Okay. So now let's move on to the next model. So what we talked about till this point is that whatever price we are going to predict is dependent on the previous price values, means the prices which has happened in the previous lap time. Now, MA talks about the price that you are going to predict today. It's not only dependent on the previous value, it's, it's dependent on the error that has occurred in the previous instances okay let's take this example you see a girl here is she she's asking that to get chocolates every day okay so at different time instances i'm i'm saying this like at time instance one the guy gets 20 chocolates okay and there is an error of minus one okay now the girl is telling that your actual chocolate should be actually 19 okay so the next day what the guy does is it actually brings the number of chocolates, okay, which is equal to the mean value plus some error that has happened on the previous day. So what was the error that has happened on the previous day, which was minus one, okay? And there's a coefficient which is associated with it, which is 0 0.5, okay? That's how you actually predict the next day chocolates, okay? The next day, the guy is going to take cho bring chocolate is equal to this. Okay. Again, he goes to that. Then again, it's, uh, the lady is telling that okay, you you got two chocolates wrong. Okay, so the number of chocolates will be matching less. So the next day, what the guy does is, since the error was two, is going to get new number of chocolates, right? With some coefficient zero point five, which is defined. Okay. So this is how it's going to be. So if you just plot these right, whatever number of chocolates the guy is bringing. You see that this is fluctuating across a average value, right? This we call as a moving average. That's why this is called as an MA model, right? Moving average model, okay? How do we predict the price? So price at any time T is you have some mean value. In this case, he was always bringing 20 chocolates and plus minus he was doing based on the error that has happened in the previous days. Okay, so that's why if you see there's a coefficient that is associated with this and what is the error that has happened previously. So this equation that you see here, right, this is nothing but a MAQ model. Okay, because we are taking care of error that has happened in till Q period time. Okay, now what have we covered? We have covered that, okay, the price today can depend on the previous values. Now the price could depend on the error that has happened in the previous days. Okay, now what happens when we accommodate both of these, then it becomes my ARMA model. Okay, so how, 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 what do we do in case of ARMA model? We have, let's say, let's take an example of ARMA 1 1. 1 is nothing but your P and Q. So P is ARP. That means it is going to depend on the P previous values and Q, which is there as a 1, that means it is going to depend on the Q previous errors. Okay, so this is how the equation is going to be. Okay, now next thing is that uh, ARMA, after ARMA, you have ARIMA model. I is nothing but the integrated. That means maybe your time series that we talked about might not be stationary. Okay, now what since it's not stationary, it should, we should not restrict ourselves for not building and doing the production, right? So, what do we do with that? If you see this, there's a linear trend in this, right? Just like we saw it in the Google stocks, which was there. If we transform this series, right? By doing this difference, how do we do it? We calculate a new series, Z of T. Okay, and how are we calculating? We take XT plus one and subtract it with XT, okay? So we just do this differencing, okay? This is called first order differencing, okay? We do this differencing, the pattern which is there in this series is going to be preserved, 
Okay. And then what we are going to do, we are going to do prediction on this. Why? Because the series, because the series is stationary, right? We can see what are the conditions that you, your mean is constant here, right? There are no seasonality, which is there, right? Your variance is the fluctuation that you see is almost constant. Okay. So we are going to do prediction on this series. Okay. Let's say we find out uh, uh, the P and the Q value. We'll come to the code when you see how we can actually find P and Q from the PAC and the PACF and ACF plots. So we'll, we'll actually do the prediction for this series. Okay. Once this series, we have done the prediction. That means let's say we are trying to find what will be the value at point K. Okay. This we will get it. Okay. Then what we are going to do, we are going to transform this back to the series. How we are going to do it? Just like we did this transformation, the subtracting right away. We are going to add this. So this you see ZT with T plus one, that is a one gap. You can accept K is Z at K minus one plus X at K minus one. Okay. And then again, you can change this X of K minus one to again this change, right? Which is will be Z of K minus two plus X of K minus two and so on. Okay. And finally, we are going to get this value B, which we already at this point. Okay. Fine. Now. Now let's talk about uh, Cerimax. Okay. Finally, let, before going into Cerimax, let's get into some uh, uh, code here in Python so that we have an understanding of how to actually deal with this. Okay. So I've got one basic uh, data here and then I'm going to just show it. So this is one of the time series that you can see it, right? This is one of the time series that you can see. How are you going to check what is the P and the Q value? That means, at what P it is related, like the previous time series and the Q, which is previous errors. So we have ACF plot, okay, which is there inside stats model, graphics dot, time series plots, time series analysis plots. So we have these two functions, plot ACF and plot PACF, okay. So we're just taking one basic data set here, okay, and then we are just plotting this. And how do we plot the ACF and PACF plot? We are going to call this function and pass on the series, okay? Lags is one of the parameter. That means if we want to find out like till 100 lags, how this is related, okay? So if you see this, this has calculated the correlation factor till 100, okay? This blue band that you see, this is nothing but the error band, okay? That means anything that is below this, inside this uh, blue band, that means we don't have enough statistical significance that this lag is related with this number of lags. Okay, let's say at, uh, let's say this is 18. Okay, so this correlation factor is very less, negative correlation, it is very less. So we don't consider this, okay, it might not be related with the uh, current, uh, lag, current price which is there. Okay, but if you see at these positions, there are high correlation, right? Uh, you can ignore the first one because it is correlation with the same series, okay? The second that you see is with the next lagged series, which is T minus one, okay? And so on. So in this case, you can find out, okay, what will be the P and the Q value, okay? So in this case, my P value will be one, two, three, right? Similarly, you can do a PACF plot. What PACF plot will tell me? What is the direct correlation of the price today with the previous lags? Okay, so this you can see it right for uh, uh, this lag one, you have high co correlation. Right? So, uh, will, let me discuss this as well. Yeah, so you have this stock prices that we show it for Google stocks data. This series also is following a linear trend upward, okay? And this is not stationary because your mean is constantly changing over time, okay? So we can do a differencing on this to make the series stationary. How are we going to do the difference? We're just going to take a first order difference, okay? Means subtracting the series with one shift, okay? So once we do the shift, we can plot the same stocks and see how this, how this looks, okay? 
Okay, uh, let me move back to this. Okay. Okay, let me take an example of uh, uh, MA model here and how we are going to do it. Okay, so this is the series that we series of data that we that we have. This is how it looks like. Okay, we are going to calculate what is the p and the q value by ACF and PACF. Okay, this is the maximum number of lags that we can plot it for. Okay, then what we are doing is given a series, I am just splitting it up into test train test and train data in order to see that how my prediction is going to be. Okay, and then I am actually fitting the ARIMA model. So, this ARIMA model is also inside the stats model library. So we're fitting an ARIMA model here. So you can provide the order for this here, which is my P, D, and Q values. So the Q values, you can see that it is equal to two here. Okay, and this looks like completely stationary. So what we have done is we have provide d is equal to zero. Okay, and then what we do is with the model we are fitting the data. Once the model fit is done, we can see the model summary. Okay, how this model has been built. So if you see this, these are the coefficients that we get. Okay, so this is the constant. Now with ma as l one the the coefficient that I was showing to you, beta one and beta two here, right? L one and L two coefficient. These are the coefficient. So, what is going to be my final equation? My predicted value is going to be constant plus zero point three seven into error that has occurred on the previous uh, day and error that has occurred on the two instance uh, two period back. Okay. So, this is nothing but my uh, MA two model. Because we are considering only the errors here, not the previous times. Okay. Yeah. So that's how we are going to predict it. When, once we have the predictions done, we can see it how it looks like. So this is the actual data. This is the test data that you see it from here, the blue line from here. And this is your predicted data. Okay. And with the test and the uh, prediction, you can actually go and check the metric of how good is my prediction. So there are ways to do it. This is how you can calculate mean absolute percentage error and mean squared error. Okay, fine. Let's come back here. So till this time we have our AR, which is auto regression on the previous values. We have MA, which is based on the errors that has occurred before. We have ARMA, which is taking it together, and ARIMA, when we have series which is not stationary. Okay, now. The next thing that we're going to talk about is Sarima. Okay. Till this time, we have not taken into consideration the S part, seasonal part. Okay. Now let's look at this data. Okay. Okay. So in this case, if you see this pattern over this 1996 to 1997 January, this pattern is some kind of repeat in each of the year, isn't it? That means there is some kind of seasonality in this period. Okay. So in this case, we go for what we call as Sarima model. Okay. So we had P, D, and Q. Now, similarly, we'll have a capital P, D, and Q. Both are analogous. It's just that capital P, D, and Q is part of the seasonal. Okay. So it's in the seasonality that we are seeing it, how the seasonality today is dependent on the previous seasonalities, okay? Or on the errors that has occurred on the previous seasonalities, okay? That's how we are going to build a Sarima model, okay? And then let's talk about this important factor, which is M here, okay? Small m, uh, just ignore this. This is actually small m, okay? So small m is the number of period it takes for the seasonality to repeat. So if you take any of the time series data and you actually plot it, you can actually find it, okay, what is the number of periods it takes for the seasonality to repeat? So if you, in, in this case, if you see, right, it takes around 12 months, isn't it? So from this to this, it takes 12 months to actually repeat the same seasonality, 
Okay. So in this case, my small m will be 12. Okay. Now let's go back to the code here. Okay. So this is one of the catfish sales data. Okay. Similarly, the sales uh, series looks like this. It's very actually, uh, the way is very simple. You take your data, get the series out of it. So one, one of the time, one of the axes becomes your time and other one is any of the uh, predictor that you are trying to do, like sales. Okay. Okay. So in this case, if you see it, there's a little bit of trend, upward trend. So you can actually uh, remove the trend by, so this is not stationary, by taking a differencing, you can remove the trend. So this is how it looks like, right? Then you can similarly, you have to find your ACF and BACF values. Get your training and test data separately. You divide your data into uh, some part of training, right? Like you take some 80% into training and 20% of your data point as testing data, okay? And then we have a library called Cerimax, okay? X, X is nothing but the exogenous, okay? So let's talk about this also. Whenever you are actually building a Cerima model, there might be one exogenous factor also that could actually impact your Sarima. Okay, let's let's take an example here. Uh, let's say you are trying to predict one account balances. Okay, over time, let's say you are trying to predict one account balances. Now, one of the exogenous factor could be the interest at which the bank is giving you. Right, the interest uh, which bank is giving you. One of the factors, because let's say the bank is giving you a higher interest, you'll probably not take out your money, right? You'll, you'll keep it in the bank only. So this is one of the factors apart from, apart from your previous whatever pattern is there, okay? So in, in such scenarios, when you know that you have one other feature as well, which could actually impact your predictions, you use Cerimax, okay? So you might have some seasonal component, you, there might be some AR or MA component from the previous uh, patterns, and there might be some other XOG variables. Okay, so in this function only, Serimax, you can actually pass here XOG is equal to your series, which is their series column. Okay, so Serimax is also inside this stats model time series, state space Serimax. Okay, so this is how we are going to build a Serimax model. So in this case, we have to provide two things. One is a small PDQ value, which is there, which is your ACF value. Is there a relation with the previous order of differencing or the previous errors, okay? Other thing that you need to provide is a capital PDQ and your M values, okay? M is nothing but your 12 in this case, okay? So you provide these things and you can actually build your Serimax model here. You just have to do a model dot fit. Okay. Once you have built your model, you can actually check out the summary. And once you check the summary here, right, you will get your coefficients. Okay. Associated with each of the factors. Okay. So AR, L12, you can find MA and Sigma2. Fine. Let me go back here. So till this point, we have uh, taken out seasonality and your XOG, okay? Now, we have not taken into consideration what happens, right, to the residuals. So whatever prediction that we do, there might be certain residuals to it, right? So we take out those residuals and actually calculate the volatility, okay? So you calculate the volatility and the variance which is there and see. So if you see this plot right here, right? This is your uh, volatile, volatility of the variance plot. You can see maybe let's say this is time and you can see at the early time periods here, right? The volatility is less and then it increases. And after some time, there is a, there is a, again, similar pattern of decrease in the volatility. And there is an increase here. And again, there is a decrease. That means there is some pattern in your 
in your residuals, right? So what we are going to do, we are going to capture this. We are going to model this volatility using ARCH on the GARCH model. Okay? Let's talk about what ARCH is actually. ARCH is, first is autoregressive, right? Because the error term that you are trying to model is actually based on the previous instances, right? Because you are taking the error that has happened today, you are trying to model it on the previous values only, isn't it? So this is autoregressive. Why this is conditional? Conditional because volatility today, you're trying to check it based on the previous values only. So if you see this, the volatility may be on the, let's say this is Jan to, Jan to March, right? And this is, let's say April to June, right? And this is July. So it's July volatility today is very conditional, right? It is going to repeat after a certain period of time. So that's why this is conditional. This is very much position dependent. Okay? Heterocid acidity is nothing but your volatility that we're trying to capture. Okay? Now, I'm not going to get in, into maths because I think we have very less time available right now. So I'll just uh, give you an intuition of how we have moved from cars to car chair. Okay. So in this case, the arch is nothing but your generalized arch. Okay. Generalized arch is why because when we are actually predicting using arch, we are saying that we are not only taking in consideration the previous values, but also considering the volatility that is being there on the previous instances. Let's say, for example, what I'm predicting today is based on the previous, what has happened on the previous day, right? And it is also dependent like how jumpy it was on the previous day. So we are also trying to capture the volatility, okay? So that's what is going to happen in GARCH. So that is why we call this a generalized. Not only taking the pre previous day's values, but also the volatility that has happened on the previous day. Okay. Fine. So this, I have taken a small note for this, just to uh, give you a parallelogram here on how we are making a, a, a jump from a thought process jump from AR to ARMA. Similarly, we are doing a jump from ARS to CARJ. Let's understand this. So when we're telling that we were going to model AR1, we are telling that AT is dependent on AT minus one, which is on the previous day, plus some error that has happened. Okay. So if we have these two factors known, we can actually predict the today's value. Okay. So what happened in case of an ARMA? We had dependence from AT minus one, which is the previous day, which is P, you can see this is a one. So that is the previous day. And then you have Q is equal to one. So the error that has occurred from the previous day. So this is ET minus one and the error that occurs today. So you can see how we have jumped from AR one to ARMA one, okay? Now, let's go to this arch. So arch, uh, mathematical derivation I'm not getting in, but this is how it looks like, okay? So your AT, which is the prediction today is dependent on error today, but also on the volatility today, okay? This is the volatility. And this volatility is dependent on what is the value on the previous day, okay? Now, this you see on ARCH, right? When you move from ARCH to GARCH, just like we were taking the errors also that has occurred on the previous day. In this case also, what we do is, we take into account, okay, what has been the volatility yesterday, but today. Apart from that, I'm also going to check on what is the volatility that was there on the previous day, okay? So this was only the volatility today. We, this, in this, we are going to capture both the value which was there on the previous day, and the volatility which was there, okay? This is, this is kind of a logical jump from AR to ARMA that we have. 
from hours to garch we this is also a similar job considering the moving average part okay so i think we have some five minutes left so i'll just go to garch model here okay so i'll just show you where your garch model is there so you have this series so these things are very same you have your acf and acf uh, you have your variance calculated okay and then you have a model called arch model okay so if i see this there's a library called arch in this you have arch model okay and in this case you can actually pass your p and q value and if you provide this policy equal to cars this is going to actually consider uh garch uh, building the garch model okay so what we can do is given your main series which is there let's go to any of this given the main series which is there you can actually go about plotting the data then finding which is the best model starting by plotting the acf and the pcf the plots on those plots you can get the p and q value and if you see any seasonality in the data you can actually go for sarima okay and then if you see any factors which can actually apart from a uh, pattern in the data which is there there might be another feature which is actually impacting it you can go for sarimax okay once you have actually plotted uh, predicted the data you can take the residuals okay by how do we find the residuals you take take what is the prediction you subtract what was actual so you have the residuals plot the residuals okay once you have plotted the residuals you can actually see okay is there any pattern on the residuals that i see can i still can i still actually uh, find pattern on it okay so once if you find any pattern on your residuals then you can actually model that also using arch and garch model okay so in in this case you can very well ask like how on the volatility part how we find that uh, uh, how we have to model it like what what is going to be my p and q value this is very similar just just we have uh, the way we have actually calculated for your normal time series we are going to take the residuals and find the p and q value okay for your garch and arch model so we are going to provide that and do the prediction once we have this prediction you can actually accommodate this with the actual prediction that you have done it from any of your previous models okay so in this case you can see okay this is what the volatility in your predicted volatility is something here okay so in this case you can see that some part of volatility will still be there in your final prediction that means your prediction is going to be better okay yeah so that's all on this part so whatever is left okay whatever is left we have something called as a white noise this is something that you cannot predict okay this is just a noise okay so this is where you actually stop it and say that okay this is something that we are not going to predict it and this is going to be a noise so white white noise will have following condition the mean is going to be zero so in this case you can see that this is fluctuating around zero so this is kind of uh, white noise right <clears throat> sorry yeah and then you have to have the standard deviation constant right and also there should not be any correlation between the lags right so the noise that you see today should not have a pattern right okay it is dependent on the previous uh, residuals okay so in this case if you see it right there is a seasonality so this is not white noise so what is the error what is the problem with this the problem is that we have not captured the seasonality which we could have done it using your sarima and sarima so we did some mistakes there so you can actually see okay this is the residual so it has some seasonality component which are not able to capture it okay so this is how you can go back and fix that so this was a brief on how what's the thought process of uh, 
building a time series model. Okay, so the way time series have evolved it, uh, I'll put a link to it. So we have been modeling using a lot of uh, neural network models, deep learning. Okay, and uh, I'll put a link to it. There are conferences which is there. You're using transformer models to predict the predictions, right? Uh, predict the future values. Uh, so you can go through the conferences. I know this is a little time. It is difficult to actually accommodate everything, but uh, I've actually maybe I've given you a little idea on how to go about uh, time series data. Okay, so that's all from my side. Uh, uh, have a good day. Over to uh, you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot, Rahul, for delivering such an insightful session. On the behalf of Analytics Vidya, I would like to uh, thank you for your time and would like to apologize for the inconvenience caused in the beginning of the session. Yeah, yeah thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank and every, yeah, and everyone, I've put up a feedback poll. So please provide in your valuable feedbacks on the session. And I would uh, thanks everyone for joining the session and really appreciate that you guys waited till the starting of the session. Thank uh, you. If you wish to connect with me, you can connect me over the yeah. We can have this question. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Rahul. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Yeah, or contact me or that. Thanks everyone for joining in. See you tomorrow in tomorrow's sessions. We have two sessions.